thank you, thank you so much. Um, that is such a tough act to follow. I mean, I really wish you were rubbish, then it wouldn't make my, my job so hard. Um, I actually, I think I've been converted as well because I love tea. And now I think I really need to have a strong coffee. Um, so I am really psyched to be here at Greenbelt. I feel like I need to do a 360. Hi. Um, um, it's my first Greenbelt, unlike other of mine. <laughs> Thank you. And it, well, it might be my last. Who knows? Let's see how we go. <laughs> I feel like I'm part of the, the coolest faith gathering. In the, in, in the UK, in Europe, in the EU, we haven't left yet, so we can still claim that one. So, and I feel very much at home, so thank you so much for welcoming me. Um, now, I don't know if you've heard, I don't know if you've seen the news, I don't know if you've picked this up on social media, but the Muslims are on trend. <laughs> and this time, it's for good reasons. So, you've all heard of uh, hipsters. Hipsters? I think I see a few in the audience. Um, but have you also heard of MIPsters? They are basically the Muslim hipsters. So let me just take you through the anatomy of a MIPster. Um, I'm going to choose a female MIPster. So at the top, imagine a beautifully wrapped scarf, perhaps like a turban. Let's say it's a turquoise blue. And underneath, peeping through, is maybe a sunset yellow scarf. Our MIPster wears large sunglasses, a pair of statement earrings perhaps, a trendy stripy top, an oversized long jacket, and a pair of trendy shoes. Probably trainers. So, as you can tell, I am not a MIPster. So, where have the MIPsters come from? Who are they? Why are they interested in fashion? And why should we be interested in them? Mipsters are cool, young, trendy, urban, beautiful creatures. Mipsters, in addition to being trendy and cool, also have a very, very vital aspect to them. And that is a bold, confident Muslim identity. And one that marries very well with a modern context. They are Generation M a term coined by Shalina Jam Muhammad, whose new book, Generation M, Young Muslims Changing the World, tells us how MIPsters are an important new phenomenon, shaping our present and our not so distant future. We are living in the age of the new Muslim cool, and fashion is a big part of that. So before we go into the present and dive into the future, let me just take you back to the 90s. Do you remember that time? Things seem to be a lot, a lot simpler, a lot easier. Well, back then, if you saw me on the street, you would have definitely called me a fashion disaster. I would often wear baggy shirts from, from men's shops and I would wear clumpy boots because I couldn't find anything in the women's sections that were, were suitable. They were either too short, they were too skimpy, or they just didn't suit my taste. So fashion wasn't on my radar at all. But then again, the fashion industry wasn't really reaching out to me. That is until recently. DKNY and Mango have launched special Ramadan lines to appeal to their Muslim audiences. And those ranges include floral, floral jumpsuits, long flowing tops, and maybe the odd um, Jumpsuit, have I already said that? <laughs> Maybe the old, like, wide like, leg trousers. So the big brands were sitting up and they were taking notice because something was happening out there on the blogosphere. Muslim women were getting hundreds of thousands of hits on their blogs and on their YouTube channels. And these channels were advising women how to combine style with their faith values. These Muslim women are leading the way in the fashion world. Women like Dina Torkia, who is a British Muslim young woman who has 1.7 million followers across social media. Her outreach prompted Liberty of London to collaborate with her on how to wear their iconic printed headgear, uh, scarves as headgear. Her YouTube turban tutorial has gained about 1.8 million views. I was one of them. So, and there's also a new fashion designer called Hannah Chajima. She's a young, 
Mipster, British Japanese Muslim convert, and she's launched her own line with the clothing giant Uniqlo. And then, did anyone hear about the eight, the first hijabi model for H and M? Ah, oh, you did. You're online. Um, well, H and M, the world's second largest retailer, featured Maria Adrisi, their first Muslim woman model in a hijab, in a hijab, in their marketing video. Now, this went completely viral, and she was seen in the video alongside. Uh, a Sikh man in a turban, there was a, a man with a prosthetic li leg, and there was even a man wearing socks with sandals. <laughs> so, <laughs> they were all united under the maxim, there are no rules in fashion. And so looking at Maria Idrisi, Hannah Tajima, and Dina Torki, and so many more, it shows us that um, they are inspiring the mainstream. And in fact, they're inspiring a trend called modest wear. Now, modest wear is breaking down the norms. It's reaching wider and more diverse audiences. And of course, it means big business. So globally, Muslims spent, in 2013, Muslims spent $266 billion on clothing and footwear. That's the total expenditure of Italy and Japan combined. And by 2019, the Muslim global expenditure is meant to balloon to $484 billion. But of course, none of this comes without a bit of controversy. We are Muslim after all. H&M's model ruffled more than just a few feather boas. Now, how, how can H&M have a model in a hijab? This is an Islamic takeover. Islam oppresses women. How can they be promoting this? These are all the questions that were going around. And of course, even Muslims were questioning it too. There was consternation from some Muslims saying, why should she be flaunting herself in public? And is the hijab a fashion statement or is it meant to be a, a sign of religious devotion? These are all debates that are ongoing. And let's not even get into Burkini Gate. <laughs> well, actually, let's. Um, a bikini is a very bizarre word that combines burqa and bikini, two completely opposing factors. <gasps> and it is, in fact, a full body wetsuit with a detachable hood. No big deal, right? <laughs> oh, no, it's the most politically loaded swimsuit that you will ever come across. Now, the bikini as you have heard recently, has been banned in French coastal resorts. Uh, they are thinking about overturning the ban, which is good news, but apparently some of the mayors are going to ignore that. Um, so there is a difficulty there because it seems that the burkini is against French values of freedom and liberty. <laughs> the irony is killing me. Even the French fashion mogul, Pierre Berger, was having palpitations that Islamic dress was going mainstream. He said that designers are there to make women more beautiful, to give them freedom not to collaborate with this dictatorship. Really? I think Muslim women and women everywhere do not want to be patronized. You can be beautiful and wear a bit more material at the same time. And guess what? A burki the burkini sales have gone sky high and a large customer base is actually non-Muslim. Yep, so the same applies to modest wear. Christian, uh, Christian women, Jewish women, women of all backgrounds actually want to look stylish and cover up a little bit more. And they're going for clothes that offer them both. Fashion is inclusive. It can reflect faith, culture, identity. It can be empowering. It's a form of self-expression. Now, I want to just highlight a, a saying that we have in the Islamic tradition. The Prophet Muhammad said that God is beautiful and loves beauty. This saying was in the context of looking good, smelling good, and feeling good. Islam actually encourages us to, you know, take a bit of pride in our appearance. You know, look a bit presentable. But... The way that Muslim women dress is always going to be a source of public debate. 
the politics that this thing on my head can provoke, uh, provoke is overwhelming. So to see Muslim women leading the way on this to get more choice, more diversity in the fashion industry is really inspiring. And I come back to Mipsters and why I'm so happy to see them exist. They are not your typical victimized Muslims who don't feel the freedoms of self-expression. Even though they are riddled with challenges, even though it's really complicated to be a young Muslim in today's world, even though they live in uncertain times, they ultimately believe in themselves, in their faith, and in their fashion. They give me hope in a bold and brighter future, and which they are shaping with flair and confidence. God is beautiful and loves beauty, and you have been a beautiful audience. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Ramona Ali, everybody.